Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel where I'm going to be talking, I guess, a lot about PhDs and my journey as a PhD student. So I'm in my messy office today. Um, I'm, we're moving house in two weeks, less than two weeks actually, so things are kind of everywhere and half packed, half not packed, but anyway, that is where the video is being done. So today I want to talk a little bit about some of the skills that you typically probably need as a PhD student or skills that we should definitely try to um, improve throughout our PhD journey. So this is part of my PhD survival guide. So I launched it early January. So it's been up for over two months now on the blog. And basically every week I publish a new post about all things PhD and I guess how to get through it and how I got through my PhD journey. So yeah, so today is about skills that PhD students need. I think the first one is actually being able to wing it. So I am definitely a very organized person. I think typically PhD students are. Um, obviously that's a generalization, but a lot of the PhD students that I know are definitely organized. We're often, you know, I guess working towards multiple deadlines, working on multiple projects at the same time, normally teaching, marking, doing all these other things. So you definitely have to stay on top of that. But I think being able to wing it is also really important. So I guess what I mean is having the faith in your own ability that if someone said, you know, can you jump up and do a presentation tomorrow? You can do that without a huge preparation. And the second skill is being able to say no. I think this is definitely a fine line. Um, it's really important to obviously get as many opportunities as you can throughout your PhD. And that's definitely something that I try to embrace conferences, research assistant work, marking, tutoring, lecturing, jumping on other uh, research and everything like that. But we all have a limit and a PhD is incredibly time consuming. And therefore, I guess our limit as PhD students is even more important to know. And it re is really important to understand that, I guess, balance between saying yes and saying no, so thinking things through, is it something you actually want to do? Is it something that you can do? Is it something that will benefit your career or make you happy? Um, because if not, then maybe give it a miss. A really important skill and one that I think is really, really difficult to develop, particularly for PhD students, is I guess wholeheartedly accepting that nothing is going to be perfect. I know that that is scary and that is hard because when you're doing something like a PhD, which typically takes you know, between three and five years and you put your entire heart and soul into your thesis, of course you want it to be perfect. And same with publications, you know, publications are going out into the world. Anyone can read them over that open access. Again, I completely understand wanting to them to be perfect, but the truth is they're never going to be. You can draft a piece of work forever you legitimately would always find a better way to say that sentence or pick up on a tiny grammatical error. And part of the PhD is actually just learning to accept that. And it's about getting your work to a level that you're incredibly proud of and you, you know, are happy to put that out into the world, but also knowing that there has to just be a point where you just pull the trigger and you just let that go out into the world. It can't be perfect and a lot of research is actually subjective or at least elements of it so somebody might disagree with the word that you used or would have used a different type of statistic or a different methodology that's okay in the end of the day you have to actually put yourself out there and put your work out there and it yeah it can be really scary and it's something that i'm just i guess still learning to do but I'm definitely in that point now that I get a draft to a point that I'm really happy with and really proud of and then I send it off to my supervisor and I know that there will be comments of course there will be and then even when it comes to publications now again I get to the point that I am incredibly proud of it my supervisors or my um 
co-authors are all proud of it and all happy for it to be sent off. But again, knowing full well, there will most definitely be some reviewers' comments and that's fine. And we work through that and that's how we learn as scientists. Okay, so another skill that I think can be really difficult to learn, I know at least for me is something that terrified me at the start of my PhD, is being able to strike up a conversation with anybody. Often in academia or in the PhD world, you definitely find yourself in situations where you are networking and meeting a lot of different people. You know, you could be walking into conference rooms, walking into lecture theatres, walking into you know, your faculty meetings, and you need to be able to strike up a conversation with anybody that's in that room, whether that be a first year student, whether that be a, a professor who has been working in the industry for 30 years. Like I said, this is something that I think I'm still learning to come, I guess, learning how to do in a way that I don't find incredibly awkward, but it is a really valuable skill. And for some people, it's going to be so much easier than others. I completely understand and empathize with that because I'm not, I guess, typically the person that would go up and just light up the room and make really great conversation starters. But you know, you can start really simple and as cliche as it is, starting with something like what's the weather like or um you know how nice of a morning it is yeah it's a little bit awkward and cringy but it's better than sitting there and not talking to somebody it's how you meet really interesting people you develop connections you know you could potentially strike up new um these research projects and research ideas and yeah so it's really important to be able to talk and strike up conversations with others the last um, skill that I want to talk about is ignoring your emails. So I write a lot on the blog about procrastination and I guess tips to overcome that because procrastination is just, I think, something that all PhD students, students, anybody, I guess, definitely does. And um, it is a really big part of the thesis journey. But emails are a terrible distraction. It's so easy if you're doing something difficult to, I guess, um, when an email pops up to jump over to that and, and answer that straight away rather than sticking with the stats that you're doing or the complex um, paragraphs that you're trying to write. Emails are important, of course. Um, it's a key part of many of the jobs that we do as PhD students and in academia. But you don't have to answer an email within five minutes. Nobody expects that. Um, that's not the point of what emails are and so getting into a really I guess, working out a timetable for you and a technique for you to ensure that you are not answering emails periodically throughout the day because that's when they become really distracting so whether that is as soon as you get to the office answer emails and then shut off your email until just before lunch or some people you don't answer all their emails late at night because for them that, that makes them feel good and makes them feel organized and then you can also do it so that it schedules and sends the email in the morning so it doesn't look like that you're up at midnight doing emails i think obviously it's really personal working out what works for you but definitely don't get into the habit of just answering emails throughout the day it is so distracting and it will take up so much of your time I've actually done to help us all keep track of our emails better is so every week along with when I actually publish my PhD survival guide segment I publish also a downloadable PDF which can be turned into your very own doctor of what PhD survival guide and for this week I actually have set up a little email uh, schedule template so I will show you what that looks like and if you're interested you can definitely get onto the website and download that. So as I said, I guess ignore my messy desk, <laughs> my um, mouse pad, because the mouse wasn't working on the desk. Um, I have my basically just little to-do list um, post-it notes, which I am getting through. Reviewers comments that I have been working on today for a publication, um, a calendar with my schedule, my blog post, that type of thing on there. So this is the email schedule that I have created. It's really simple, but basically just holding you accountable for 
when are you actually going to be checking your emails each day, you know, in the morning, in at lunch and in the afternoon? Thank you for tuning in to another PhD related video. I'm going to be sharing a lot of content around the PhD survival guide that will, I guess, match with whatever post I'm bringing out each week. Not every week, some of the posts probably don't need me talking more about it, they're pretty self-explanatory, but I thought that um, I guess doing videos is a nice way for me to expand on what I've been writing in those posts. If you enjoy definitely please subscribe to my channel and check out the blog at www.doctorofwhat which is linked below as well and yeah i'm excited to keep sharing some content for you